Hello there guys and welcome to BTA Bite Size episode 2. Today we are going to be covering going over and starting a new career and what all the different options are. Uh, first off, let me draw your attention to the screen that you can see in front of you. Uh, you will notice that story mode is not there. Uh, that is basically an intentional choice that has been removed. It was causing quite a few issues with the mod. The mod, uh, for some reason, the mod and the story mode didn't really like it. Don't worry, you're not missing out on the story. You should have already played the game already, so you should know the story. But just on the off chance that you haven't, the story missions are in the game still. They are just in the form of flashpoints. That's it. So before we do anything... Uh, with regards to our new mission, one of the first things you do need to do is you do need to go to Skirmish and you do need to click on Mech Bay. What this does is it will load you into the Skirmish Mech Bay. It is going to take some time because it has to load all the assets in. Uh, basically, what this does is it helps uh, populate the um, all the extra stuff from the community asset bundle into the game. It does take an age. It's extremely slow to start with, but once you've done it and you've managed to get back out and you've saved in your new career and campaign, it does get a lot quicker. But it is something that you do need to do first. It just basically means that everything else um, uh, loads properly. Um, so you just want to go to career and you want to go to, obviously, you have the new load continue, same as every other game on the planet. Uh, ignore the debug menu. That's purely for testing purposes. Don't touch it. Ignore it. So you just go to new and then you're greeted with this new screen. First off, big, 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 big point. Leave Iron Man alone. Don't touch it. Don't even think about it. Just forget about it. As great as this mod is, and as stable as this mod is, it is, and it is, you know, really, really good, it's not beyond having the odd hiccup, and you don't want to have a minor hiccup that completely knackers your entire playthrough. So I would really, 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 really advise you to not have Iron Man mode on. Um, so we'll go go through these um, base options quick just to give you a quick overview on these. So obviously reduced Argo upgrade costs, fairly self-explanatory as with a lot of these are. Um, you tick that box if you want to play it. Now there, bear in mind there are a lot more um, upgrades for the Argo now um, that you can pick. So if, it's, if you're on an early start, if you're a new player, I would say probably slip that on. It's just going to save you a little bit of money. Uh, friendly fire does what it says on the tin you've you can either set it to having none at all you can have it so only the enemies friendly fire each other or you can have it so everybody does it again bear in mind that your mech, your mech pilots will probably end up doing more damage to you than they will to the enemy so if you're a new pilot i'd say and you want to get an idea of how it works maybe go for enemies i personally leave it on because it just it forces you to start thinking about uh, lines of fire and stuff like that uh, obviously i get if you're new and you want to make your life a little bit easier you might not want to have it switched on uh, starting planets do not select clan i'm telling you don't do it uh, as exciting as it may be for you to get your hands on clan tech don't <laughs> just just don't all right it, trust me on this it will whoop your ass and if there any if there is anything that's going to kill your interest in playing the mod it's going to be turking your first mission in clan space and getting your ass handed to you straight away and losing your entire squad it has happened it can happen it will happen just don't pick it likewise uh primitive and funsies probably also not for you um, try and stick with the, the like you know the the standard ones like Arano, Davian, Karita, Liao. Uh, the basic difference is they will control obviously where you spawn on the Inner Sphere map. They will also control. It also has a, a difference on sort of what mechs you get to start with. So you know leave it as Arano or you know go for one of the other main houses. Uh, parts for mech assembly. Uh, basically, the uh, what this means is this record. This will change how many mechs parts that you need to build said new mech, um, and this will also change um, how many uh, how many mech parts you can actually combine together. So, say for argument's sake, if you if you pick three three parts then you can have two parts of like a one specific variant of a hunchback say and you can have one part of another specific hunchback variant you can actually combine those and make the one mech that you have the two parts for so you can sort of pick and choose what you want there so again this will just make it harder um i usually run five because it's just a little bit extra difficulty for me um but obviously as you know i would say go for three and then you can you know you can experiment with doing all of that um mech recovery chance this will basically control if you lose your mech in combat and if your mech gets blown up this controls how likely you are to get your mech back 
or not. That's it, basically. Uh, so there's a 50% chance that you'll get it. There's a 50% chance you won't. Obviously, if you do recover it, it's going to be damaged to hell, but at least you've still got it. Uh, contract payment is basically, again, it controls how much money you get for completing the contract. Uh, me, personally, I tend to advise always go for max salvage, so the payment option isn't really that important. Um, but if you want to have the max salvage and a little bit extra money with it, then maybe stick that on Generous. might make your life a little bit easier. Well, it will. I'm, yeah. Duh. Uh, salvage, this controls the amount of salvage you will get, the game will give you. Uh, so obviously the higher that is, the more salvage you're going to get. So you're going to get more guns, you're going to get more, you know, uh, ECMs and, and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, commander experience, experience points. This controls how many XP, how much XP your commander has at the very beginning of the game. So the higher this is, basically the more skills you can spec in with your commander early on. Again, 10,000 if you want it really easy, 1750 if you want to make it hard, your choice. Uh, advanced mech warriors, again... Uh, this will, as you progress through the game and your pilots raise up in, in skill level, instead of keeping all of the new pilots like at the base, sort of like two, three, 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 four, say, um, what this will happen is it will advance those pilots up. So if you go to the, the hiring hall, the pilots are going to be a higher level than just that base. So you're not starting always from like ground zero. So um, that's, you know, that's basically what that controls. Uh, pilots per system again it, what it says on the tin it just controls how many pilots are in the hiring hall in each specific system you go to if you want to hire loads of pilots then obviously you want to raise this number up but honestly you're not going to be hiring that many especially early on five is perfectly fine uh, mech warrior progression is basically controls the amount of experience that the mech warriors gain after each mission Nice and simple um, again if you want them to level up faster you set that to fast if you want them to level up slower Again, a lot of this, you know, depends on a lot of this is basically how hard you want to make your life. Believe me, from your first go, you want to make it as easy as possible. So, you know, if you just want an average, if you want a good experience, pretty much leave most of this as it is. But if you want to make your life easy just to get into the modding, just get started, then crank a few of these up just to make your life easier. Uh, MechWarrior Exponent and Multiplier, basically the same, uh, essentially in the same vein. They control how quickly your you can level up your mech pilots. So one of them controls the uh, amount of XP that your um, pilots need to level to the next point. And the other one controls what the, um, like as they level up, it controls the modifier. So obviously each subsequent level of skill point requires a subsequent higher level of XP. So those two just control those base values. Again, if you want an easy life, set them to fast. I tend to just have them run both as normal. Entirely up to you. Uh, lethality. If your mech pilot gets uh, shot out of their cockpit, or if they or the mech gets blown up, this controls whether they get killed or whether they go into the med bay. That, so that again, um, always lethal. The, like lethal basically means they will die every time. Never means they won't ever die. They'll only ever go into the med bay. Again, how how easy you want to make your life. Same with the starting money. I would I would say for a newer player that's just getting started in, start with the uh, two hundred and fifty thousand. It just means you can go a little bit longer without um, worrying about uh, your sort of monthly contract build stuff. Uh, mech base C bills. This this one here controls the um, how much uh, how much like repairs and things cost. Uh, so if you have to repair a mech or if you want to fit a new engine or if you want to swap weapon systems out, obviously these all cost money. This this particular one controls how much. I've, you know those how much those are going to cost again if you want to make your life easier you crank it up if not you crank it down so shop selling prices what this does is controls how much you uh basically can sell your mech stuff your mechs for and all your um you know if you've got like 50 heat sinks and you want to get rid of a load of them that's basically what that controls. Uh, scrap return value. Again, you can scrap mech parts from the mech bay directly to make some money. If you need it for desperate, this controls how much value of said mech part you get. So for argument's sake, when you, it's quite common when you, when you do the salvage and it will tell you in the top right hand corner, you have like 4.7 million credits worth of salvage. Uh, and then you go to scrap the mech parts and they're like 120,000 C bills each. 
that's what this controls. So you can basically, the higher you set that, like, you know, obviously the more money you make when you scrap stuff. Uh, mech maintenance, again, this what this will do is uh, it controls how much the each subsequent mech costs you to maintain. So there's a monthly cost for your salary, for the running of the Argo, and for maintaining the mechs that are in your mech bay. So the more mechs you have in your mech bay, and the heavier they are, the more money they'll cost you. So just bear that one in mind. If you if you don't need to have your mech bay completely filled, and I'm talking about late game, um, then don't, because obviously it's going to cost you money. Uh, apart from that, that is basically it for the difficulty settings. I hope this did explain a few things for you. Um, like I said, ignore Iron Man mode. Don't do it. Um, if it, if it was helpful and you did enjoy it, please don't forget to leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to come and see me on Twitch. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And that is it from me, guys. Hope you all stay safe. Have a good one. I'm out. Bye bye.